Hello and welcome to the podcast. Breakfast on Midlands 183 with thanks to Tillamore Credit Union's current account, tillamorecu.ie. Thank you, Cameron. Look at that beautiful weather out there. We're going to top it off with an absolute tune from Hosier and, of course, bad dad gags for you right now. Arguably a better tune than Hosier. Oh, I tell you what, this weekend cannot get any better, can it? Ah. Well, actually, looking outside now, we've we've got a window here in the studio, and uh, it's looking really good out there. Yeah. So maybe you're is. right, Peter. Maybe it can't get any better. No. Well, it can. We have bad dad guys. Okay, you're right. You're right. right. Let's do this. Um, big hello to Georgie. Georgie is ten, and he's from Athlone, and he said, uh, "Why would Cinderella never make a good footballer? Because she keeps running away from the ball, doesn't she?" <laughs> Georgie, that is brilliant. It's a good I one, Georgie. It. Good start. Exactly. Strong start. Uh, for bad dad gags, my favourite teacher at school was Miss Turtle. Funny name, but she tortoise well. Tortoise well. Kev. Uh, Kev. Uh, Kev. Oh, the boo. Kev, you, you were doing so good. You were doing so good there over the last few weeks. But look, there's always next week. Kev, I can't, I can't argue with the audience this yeah, time. Yeah, true. Uh, Sophie got into it. Kids love bad dad gags. They do. That? They absolutely love it. And why not? Because it is brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Sophie got in touch. She said, what do you call a horse with a sore throat? I don't know. A horse horse. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie, Kev, that is brilliant. Kev, you're getting outshined by the, by yeah. the children. Kev. Step it up. Write some of these down. How's Come that? Come on. Uh, Duncan is probably the king of bad dad guys. He is. He, is. he sends them yeah. in every day. It doesn't matter if it's he Friday. He does. He doesn't care. And he's always on his game. He Once said, he lads, <laughs> yesterday I bet on three horses. Sunshine, moonlight and good times. I didn't even get one winner. And do you know what? I don't blame it on the good times. <laughs> I don't blame it on moonlight. I don't blame it. I blame it on the bucky. There you go. On the bucky. <laughs> on the bucky. Oh, no. <laughs> Is that a uh, mistaken lyrics? Because um, I thought it's been blaming it on the buggy, but no, clearly I'm wrong. No, it's a joke. It's a joke. Oh, Cameron. Peter, it's come on. Joke. That was Cameron. also it's a joke. joke. It's get, a joke. Oh, get out of here. No, guys, you're welcome. You, only, up, you get one reaction show. every Friday. Get out. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, big shout to Zulu from Mullingar who said, uh, A friend of mine put vodka into his lawnmower instead of diesel. Do you know what he ended up with? His lawn half cut. <laughs> <laughs> It's very good. <laughs> that is brilliant. Maybe a bit earlier. <laughs> Speaking of lawnmowers, obviously, because it's a lovely day out there. We've got two lawnmower jokes. Yeah, I was going okay. to cut the lawn yesterday, you know that? Right. Yeah, I took out the extension cord and I noticed a label on it said, unwind fully before use. So I put the lawnmower away, back in the shed, poured myself a beer and watched the match. Good man. There you go. Good man. <laughs> good Friday behaviour. <laughs> Ella from Mullingar is eight and she loves bad dad guys. Tell you. Good. Um, she wants to know if you know what ET is short for. E.T. Yeah. I e. can't T. say I do. He's short because he has little legs. Oh, very good. <laughs> Lads, yesterday someone knocked at my door looking for donations towards a new swimming pool. So I gave him a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> Real helping hand. Hi, Peter and Cameron. I can't believe it. My cloning experiment paid off. I'm so excited. I'm beside myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hi lads Not a good week I lost my job At the shoe factory Oh that's terrible yeah. Sorry to hear that They said I was stealing Yeah I got the boot <laughs> <laughs> Good job But at least I got some free shoes True uh, Jimmy said When I was a child The doctor said I had a lazy eye I'm now 52 And it spread to my entire body <laughs> Brilliant. Right, let's give you one more. Yeah, yeah, okay. Roisin. You need to, need to pick up after that last <laughs> one. Roisin said, lads, I'm not impressed. I said to my husband, did you eat my chocolate eclair in the fridge? He said, no, how dare you? I ate it in the sitting room instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dad joke. That's a proper dad. Takes a woman to give us a proper dad joke. You know yeah. that? Lads, come on, step it up. Get this show in full Monday to Friday from 6.30am to 9 on Midlands 103. Billy Joel, Midlands 103. What an absolute classic. 21 minutes past 7. So you do know the equivalent of a nice cup of coffee in the morning is a brain teaser to get the, the hamster up on the wheel, to get you set for the day ahead. We call it a caffeine kick. And here's one for you now. Let's brew you up a coffee. Or an espresso or a cappuccino latte, whatever you have. And this is with thanks to Mick Ryan and Castle Pollard who sent this one in. Have a listen to this. 
Text or WhatsApp your answer, followed by your name and location. 083 30 10 103. Do that, get it right, get on the honours list. Mick says, Bob the Builder builds an estate of 100 houses and wants to number them from 1 to 100. So he has to buy each digit separately. For example, for 24, he must buy a 2 and a 4. For number 36, he has to buy a 3 and a 6 and so on and so forth. The question is, how many 9s does he need? Hmm. So he's building 100 houses. He has to buy his numbers separate, as in 2 and 4, 24, 3 and 6, 36, blah, blah, blah. How many 9s does he need? Text or WhatsApp your answer, followed by your name and location. Get it right and get on the honours list. And remember the other rule. Get it wrong and we completely ignore you. I'm sorry, it's a, it's a cutthroat world in the world of caffeine cake. Breakfast with Peter Dunn on Midlands 103. Weekday mornings from 6.30am. These are the highlights. 083 30 10 103. When you want to get in touch... We're asking about um, how you found Eurovision the other night. Paul and Leash said Ireland put on a fabulous show, was the best in years. Dee said Ireland has come a long way since Dana and not in a good way. Duncan also said as far as Eurovision went, I watched the paint dry in the kitchen. However, I'm wondering which dentist did Bambi Thug's dental work and uh, how much did it cost? He's just asking for a friend. Uh, it was, yeah, there's some grill she's got there. <laughs> it is, yeah. yeah. Um, did you enjoy it, David? Yeah, yeah, no, I think it was one of the better years for the overall quality of song and presentation and all that, really good. And to have Ireland in the knockings of the the, the final stages, that was unusual and, yeah. uh, and enjoyable. At the, I was looking at it going, oh, wow, oh, actually, don't win. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. Ah, just stop. Please, don't win. You'll cripple our country. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but actually, I think the best song won on the night, in fairness. Oh, uh, Nemo, Nemo, the, the artist the uh, for Switzerland. Yeah. Unbelievable well, song. Give, give everybody a reminder of that song. How's this? I thought it was a great performance. Wow. Yeah. And you know what the funny thing is about that performance? It was just him. It yes. was just and uh, on, on a balance on, thing and on a kind of a plate that um, a spinning top. Yeah, a spinning top plate, but um, they were fantastic. Yeah, their ability to sing almost operatically while spinning around in circles after running up and down the thing was kind of mind blowing. Absolutely, uh, and don't forget to rap as well. That's not easy to do when you're running around a stage. Yeah, no, pitch Absolutely perfect. Excellent. Uh, 100% a deserving winner. And actually a clear winner, I think, on both the uh, uh, the judge votes, massive winner, and finished at least a second or third in the in the, in the the popular vote. So very, very deserving winner. Mm. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's just great crack going around all the countries and getting the votes off these ridiculous broadcasters who you'd never hear from or see again, you know? True, yeah. But you know what? I was watching when the public vote was coming through and I went, ah, this is why I don't watch it anymore. If you know your politics, you know your geography, you know what way the votes are going to go, which is kind of disappointing. Yeah. Uh, mm. Well, the public vote is the last bit. Yes. The, it's the, the judges are yeah, what, what, what we yeah. get when we go around all the countries. Mm. Um, but the judges are even regionally biased. Oh, of course, yeah. 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 But look, so that's, that's, that's part of the whole, whole picture. And you, the poor UK getting absolutely nothing from the public. <laughs> It was, yeah, uh, yeah, no, uh, <laughs> Ollie Alexander, easily the most famous performer on the Eurovision um, uh, schedule, but uh, mm. arguably with the worst song. So yeah, it, was, it was brutal in fairness. It was really bad. Sorry, Ollie, just yeah. you didn't get given a good <laughs> song, mate. But I think Bambi Thug, they did us, they did us proud. In yeah, fairness, hundred percent. You know the performance was absolutely brilliant. I thought song. I would probably wouldn't listen to the song, but the performance, excellent. Well, I am a pagan at my at heart, and <laughs> I love the music. <laughs> typical David Hollywood, huh? Uh, typical, <laughs> t- typical Antichrist Hollywood. Typical, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, t- Antichrist Hollywood. That's a, that's a new name for you, isn't it? I'm not anti. Christ like all oh, right okay because um, you do have another nickname do you know what it is it's David holy balls Hollywood <laughs> I, I was not expecting that <laughs>
I wish I wasn't here right now. <laughs> I'm looking forward to tomorrow's nickname. <laughs> Get this show in full Monday to Friday from 6.30am to 9 on Midlands 103. And today is a landmark day for me. You know that? It could be a landmark day for you too. You know why? Because today is the first day in a long, 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 long time I left the house without a coat. There you go. Normally, if you're a silly o'clocker, you're up at ridiculous time. 360 days of the year, you walk out the front door and you go, Oh, it's Baltic. It's Baltic. I normally cuddle in a cup of tea and a travel mug as well. Can't start today without tea. But this morning, I kind of stood at the front door and I went, Will I want I? Will I want I? Will I want I? Go on. Go for it. Go for no coat. And then the other half of my brain was going, Ah, no, 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 no. I've been burnt too many times before. It was like coming out of a bad relationship, you know? I've been hurt before. I don't know. Should I choose? Actually, just maybe, maybe a jacket, you know, just to be sure, a jacket. I went, no, to hell with this. Look, it's going to be highs of 22 degrees today. That's it. That's decision made. Done and dusted. I'm going without a cold today. And that's it. No radio? It's fine. You can get the full show Monday to Friday from 6.30am to 9 on midlands103.com or you can download the free app from, I don't know, wherever you get your apps, I suppose. Boston, more than a feeling. That's the song that took five years to make in a basement. I paid off in the end. Because it's an absolute classic. And speaking of classics, Bruce Springsteen... He was spotted visiting a few venues over the weekend. He went for uh, for chips in Leo Burdock's the other night ahead of his uh, his gigs. Uh, and in fairness, you can't beat Leo Burdock's for chips. In fairness, it is delicious. And uh, he rocked out Kilkenny last night, Nolan Park. Twenty eight thousand people were there to see the boss. He's heading to Cork on Thursday, and he recovered from a, a bit of a cold to play Nolan Park. Fairness to him, he puts on one heck of a gig. And the crown has left empty-handed at this year's BAFTA TV Awards, despite being nominated eight times in total. So Top Boy, Happy Valley and The Sixth Commandment, they're all the big winners at the ceremony in London, taking home two prizes each. Sarah Lancashire beat our very own Sharon Horgan to clinch Best Actress. Timothy Spall picked up the award for Best Actor. David Tennant received his first nomination for the show Good Omens, which is based on a novel by Terry Pratchett. It's been lovely to see the fan base that has reacted to it so strongly. And and, uh, and now, of course, it's it's sort of gone beyond the book now as we tell a second series and we're going to tell a third series. Uh, and hopefully we're taking the fans with us, so that's been a joy. And Gladiator 2, starring our very own Paul Mescal, is among the most anticipated movie releases of the year. It comes 24 years after the Oscar-winning epic starring Russell Crowe. And children's films including Inside Out 2, Paddington in Peru, Despicable Me 4 and If are also included on the top 10 lists of films that people are excited to see this year. I'm really excited about those, actually. One thing I love to do, I love bringing the kids to the cinema. Do you know why? Because there's always a 20 minutes, about 20 minutes during a kid's movie when parents can close their eyes and go for a nap. Breakfast with Peter Dunn on Midlands 103. Weekday mornings from 6.30am. These are the highlights. Let's do this. Who's with us this morning? And it's beautiful. Beautiful Friday morning. Well, big shout out to Nana. Good morning, Nana. Have a great weekend. And enjoy that weather, won't you? Hello, chicken nugget. Nana is our co-president of City O'Clock Club. Howdy, Peter. Good morning to you and all the silly o'clockers. Tis a hot morning. I'm down to my shirt already. I take the shirt of any man's back. Now, there you go. That's from Stephen the Milkman. <laughs> I hope you and all the silly o'clockers have a great weekend. God bless you all. Stephen also said, You're a man after me on heart, Peter. I leave two tea bags in my cup. Best drink of all time. I've never tried a cup of tea with two tea bags in. Could be a challenge for later on. We'll see. Happy Friday, Peter, from all your fans in Keypack in Kilbegan. Have a fantastic weekend. Good morning, guys. I take the shirt of any man's back. Telling you. Joan, have a brilliant weekend. Great to hear from you. Morning. What a beautiful morning. Was up at 5 a.m. to get ahead of myself from Chris and Tinny Cross. Good morning, Chris. Hello, Chicken Nugget. Hello to Philly Lennon on the way to work in Dublin with his big 
red sunburned face. <laughs> That's for you, Philly. And big hello to Ben Poo Poo Kenny on the way to work also. His shoes is off here for the day. <laughs> Lads have a brilliant one today, won't you? Happy Friday from Neve, who's tuned in from London. Good morning, Neve. Over the bar was the place. Stuck it over the bar. And Dee and Mullingar is up and all done. You hear that? Dee has a day's work done at six minutes to seven. What are you up to? Great to hear from you, Dee. Good morning, Peter. Happy sunny Friday. Can you give a big shout out to Offaly first pro boxer and fellow polo man, Paul Lunum, in his first professional fight later on in Dublin. Bring it home from your local bus driver, Kev. Over the bar with the place for it. Ah, don't stick it over the bar. Stick him over the bar, Paul. Brilliant. Best of luck later on. And have a great weekend, Kev. Another co-president of Silly O'Clock Club. Good morning, Peter. Another beautiful sunny morning. Have a great weekend from Vinny and the Baba Club. Good morning, Vinny. I take the shirt of any man's back. Vinny said, best way to drink tea. Leave the bag in a mug. I completely agree with you, Vinny. Completely agree. Uh, uh, Brendan's with us this morning. Good morning, Brendan. Nanny Mary is with us as well. Good morning, Nanny Mary. Hello, chicken nugget. Nanny Mary's going to chill out for the weekend. She said, I'm not doing anything. I'm going to listen to music, watch TV, binge and eat crap. Have a nice weekend, Peter. And to everybody who's tuned in from Nanny Mary. You know something? That sounds like heaven this weekend. Johnny and Clonny Gown is with us this morning. Good morning, Johnny. Over the bell was the place for it. Except Johnny's not in Clonny Gown. Do you know where he is? It's 11pm and Johnny is currently in Vegas. He said, good night, good morning, Zillio Clockers from the gang in Vegas. Got here three hours ago, no sleep yet. Oh my God, don't sleep in Vegas. You don't go to Vegas to go to sleep, lads. Uh, that's why they pump oxygen into the casinos to keep you awake. And Johnny Mack is listening in Vegas as well. He's a new member of the Zillio Clock Club. Guys, have a brilliant time. And Johnny Mack, you do know you are now... That is your silly o'clock club. Good morning to Teresa and Clara, who's up in Adam this morning. Here's a ding for you, Teresa. And the lads in Vegas got back to us. They're currently sitting in the bar in the Excalibur with eight people from around the world listening to Midlands 103 right now. Let's stick it over the bar again. Over the bar was the place. Ah, lads. And Johnny Max delighted to be one of us. Johnny Mac, you are one of us. Whether you like it or not. Well, you're missing the music. You can get the show in full weekday mornings from 6.30am on Midlands 103. Thank you, David. Love your work. Absolutely love your work. Welcome to Tuesday, by the way. It's 25 to 9 and the 14th to the 5th in the year 2024. I think one of the best inventions for me, Dave... Mm in the last number of years has been Google Maps. Do you ever use Google Maps? I I, I hate Google Maps. Oh, of course you hate Google Maps. I can't stand it. <laughs> uh, honestly. I okay, love it. No, I'm glad you brought this up. It's about time we had a chat about Google Maps. No, and Google in general. But I, what I love doing with Google Maps is I love kind of dropping a pin in like a city and just having a look around city, random cities around the world. Okay, I that's fair enough. Like, I have time I just, for I love that. that. My issue is people have forgotten how to navigate do you know, so I'm uh, hopefully touch wood going to know how to drive uh, very soon. We've got the test tomorrow morning. Actually. Oh, best of luck. Thanks. Lovely. Let us know how you get on. And I'm committing to never using Google Maps. I'm ah, just going to learn how to change. get everywhere. That'll change. That will change. I know it will. Yeah. But I still I'm going to try. <laughs> uh, like the amount of like people putting in Google Maps to do the same journey day in, day out. Yeah, and sure, maps will throw you down the wrong road half the time as but well. But you're right. Sometimes it does that. But sometimes it'll tell you what the traffic like is like in the area that you've done time and time again. So you can avoid the, the traffic. So it's not, not the worst thing in the world. Like all... F- um, very, very successful forms of new technology. It obviously has its uh, positive sides, uh, mm-hmm. but I do think uh, we are losing the plot with it completely and everyone's just walking around with it in their hand, on their car, being sent down ridiculous routes by some automated technological voice. I want it to stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, another thing you're going to need when you're out driving as well, let's say you're driving in a foreign country, you're going to need Google Translate. Right. Yes, Probably. that's another handy tool as well. Google yeah. Translate, it's good crack. Um, Are you just selling Google products here today? What's pretty the much? Yes. Okay. What do you think? I'm trying to land a job. I think, with Google. They're, doing, they're, I think they're doing all right themselves. I hear they're getting on all right. Ah, they're not too bad. They could all do better. <laughs> um, but somebody has got onto Google Translate, mm. and uh, they were playing about with it. 
And they put in a sentence in English and got it to translate to Chinese. Okay? okay. And that sentence is, Nana shout at that punk when he take that spicy bacon. Nana okay? shout at that punk yeah. when he take so, spicy bacon. Nana shout at that punk when he take that spicy bacon. So let's get the translation in Chinese for that right now. Okay, you listening? Okay, yeah. Let's do this. Na 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 shout na that na punk la la take na spicy la bacon la na na shout at that punk when he take that spicy bacon na 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 la la na na la la. That can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> You heard it yourself, David. You heard it yourself. Phenomenal. <laughs> Chat you time. Yep. Good. No radio? It's fine. You can get the full show Monday to Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 9 on midlands103.com or you can download the free app from, I don't know, wherever you get your apps, I suppose. George Michael, Fast Love. We are talking about Google a few minutes ago. David doesn't like Google Maps. But uh, Joanna texts in. She said, as my 10-year-old showed me yesterday... Google can do your homework. And she sent us in a screen grab of Google. And there's a little button there, an icon up at the top that says, solve homework with your camera. I never knew that. Wow. There you go, parents. There's another one for you. And uh, our very own Lorraine got in touch with her take on David's uh, modern day driving. I can just picture David driving in his car with his little sundial or his book of maps. Like, how are you going to do that and drive, David? Best of luck tomorrow. Yeah, I can see David driving uh, an antique car wearing a monocle. Get this show in full Monday to Friday from 6.30am to 9 on Midlands 103. The core is on your feel-good breakfast, Midlands 103. Good morning, it's Peter Dunn here with you. How's that caffeine kick going down? Um, Some wrong answers there, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to give it to you again, and I want you to have a think about this, Okay. Bob the Builder builds an estate of 100 houses and he wants to number them from 1 to 100. So he has to buy each digit separately. So like for 24, he has to buy a 2 and a 4. For 36, he has to buy a 3 and a 6. So the question is, how many 9s does he need? How many 9s from house 1 to 100? Text or WhatsApp your answer, followed by your name and location, 083 30 10 103. Have a think about it. Okay. Breakfast with Peter Dunn on Midlands 103. Weekday mornings from 6.30 a.m. These are the highlights. Kygo, Whitney Houston. This is your feel-good breakfast. It's Midlands 103. Good morning. It's Peter Dunn here with you on this beautiful Wednesday morning. 12 minutes past 8 on the 15th of the 15th in the year 2024. Halfway through the month, halfway through the week. 083 30 10 103 when you want to text a WhatsApp and it's powered by the home of Offaly's top selling car brand Lamb Brothers Toyota on the Arden Road in Tullamore. Are you heading on holiday soon? Are you going to grab a flight? Are you flying from Dublin Airport by any chance? If so, you're going to see something rather unusual in Dublin Airport because artificial intelligence has landed. There's going to be new robot handlers to help you with your bags. Is that cool? Honestly, four bots with names like Handler Bling, <laughs> Handler Bing <laughs> and Sir Botalot will be in operation at the airport this summer and they'll be available to assist passengers with additional needs and hidden disabilities as well. I kid you not. You go to the robot call point, the robot will arrive, you place your bags into the robot, select your gate on the screen, and the robot will bring your bags down to the gate and guide you along the way. That is brilliant. So the robot will carry your bags and you follow the robot down to your gate. That is brilliant. So if you're getting a Ryanair flight, you're that far down the terminal that the robot will probably have to stop and charge halfway down there. Breakfast with Peter Dunn on Midlands 103. Weekday mornings from 6.30am. These are the highlights. B-52s. On the home of your feel-good breakfast, Midlands 103. 22 minutes past eight. Good morning to you. It's Peter Dunn with you. So we played a bit of Bruce Springsteen in the last hour. And he's paid tribute to the late Shane McGowan at his concert in Kilkenny. He performed a rainy night in Soho during his gig in Nolan Park. And Bruce, of course, had visited Shane last year, months before he passed away in November. 
and uh, let's have a listen to his take on the Poe's classic. Beautiful tribute with a beautiful song. There you go. And the troubled co-op live arena in Manchester will finally open its doors tonight with a gig by local band Elbow. So it has to postpone its uh, opener three times because of a series of technical problems. Uh, Peter Kay was supposed to open it a number of weeks ago but had to kick his dates back a few times. And the venue is the UK's biggest indoor arena and cost over 360 million pounds to build and Britain's Prince Harry and his wife Meghan's Archwell Foundation has been listed as delinquent in California for failing to submit annual records so a notice was sent to the charity earlier this month explaining that uh, it could mean its uh, registration may be suspended or revoked but it's understood the foundation believes everything was filed on time but a check wasn't received huh? Ah, uh, the check was in the post, was it? Yeah? Go on, Harry. If only Harry knew somebody who had a few bob, you know, that he could give a call to. Stop taking my calls. So why do you stop taking your calls? Because you wouldn't pay your bills, Harry. No radio? It's fine. You can get the full show Monday to Friday from 6.30am to 9 on midlands103.com or you can download the free app from, I don't know, wherever you get your apps, I suppose. Let's educate the nation. Let's bring you some fantastic facts. These facts are 100%, 100% new, 100% fantastic, and 100% facts. That enough 100% there for you, Cameron. They're so fantastic, I've kicked David Hollywood out just so I can be here for them. So I noticed, yeah. Yeah. You arranged poor David to do a driving test today. Peter got a bit of a shock when <laughs> I arrived and David wasn't here. Mm. Best luck to reasons. David, by the way, for on his uh, driving test. He better pass. He better pass. Yeah. No, no pressure. David. He's too old to fail. <laughs> You're too old to fail. <laughs> Remember, if you lose, you're out of family, David. That's it. No pressure. <laughs> Best of luck. Best of luck, David. Not a bother on you. Um, big load all the boys and girls going to school this morning. Indeed. Yeah. We're absolutely. here to educate you. We are here to educate. And Before you get into school. Teachers educate as well. Do you know that? Do they? Yeah. But do you know who has the world record for the loudest thing ever shouted? You? No, an Irish teacher. Really? Yes. It belongs to an Irish teacher and she shouted the word quiet at 121.7 decibels. I don't know. I, I, I That's can't. as loud as a thunderclap or a chainsaw. <gasps> what? Yes. That's an angry teacher. That must have been terrifying. Boys and girls, be nice to you. Imagine you're a morning. student in SBHE <laughs> and your teacher shouts it. The, the volume of a thunderclap or a chainsaw my god you'd never speak up ever again you'd be gone home yeah you'd be well, with, you'd be deaf <laughs> yeah boys and girls Jesus if there's ever a good reason to behave yourself that's it yeah. fear teachers. fear the teacher's volume <laughs> do they teach that in teacher school how to shout really loud no I reckon you have to be born with it oh, I reckon right, okay. like the teacher prodigies are all they need to be able to do is shout loud Okay. You know, like when they walk into teacher school. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. I know some of them are a bit weaker this year, but let me tell you, this one woman, by golly, she can shout. Oh, she can. She can blow the years built off. Built for this career. Because <laughs> what else are you going to be built for if all you can do is shout? There you go. Yeah, well, you have to be heard over like 30 odd exactly. voices. So, you know, you know it's a play. viable skill in fair the profession. Play. Absolutely. Have you ever had a headache? Yeah, you give me one very frequently. Good. <laughs> Well, between 5 and 10% of people have never had a headache. You know that? What? You lucky. That can't, that can't be true. Yeah, there you go. How can there you not you have a headache? I don't know. No, no, I'm, I definitely have headaches. God almighty. You get a headache for anything. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. no way 10% of people haven't had a headache. There you go. These are facts, Cameron, and they're fantastic. So, that's, wished. That's incredible. You know, that, that fact is, amf- is as fantastic. You know that one that not everyone has that inner monologue in their head? Mm-hmm. That some people just don't, they don't talk to themselves in their head. No, like, they just say everything out loud. Yeah, like, and get in trouble. <laughs> how do you not think in your head? Like, I don't, I don't get I it. Don't know. I don't get it. Some people just what's built, built different. What's the most you've ever paid for a burger? Mm, I'd say I'd say I've never surpassed twenty quid. 
fair enough and you probably get chips with it and all that kind of stuff yeah and it's usually like a, that's one of them premium burgers you know they're mm. tiny and the bun is really expensive and there's nothing excellent about them you just get conned out of yeah pretty much you know, you, whereas you go to McDonald's and pay <laughs> 9 euro for a burger twice the size well the most expensive burger in the world costs 5,000 dollars this and better be a big in, burger. It's in Las Vegas. It would be Las Vegas, actually. Yeah. It? Oh, yeah. Oh, most, uh, there's hardly a picture of it there, is there? No. No, no. It has no. to be massive. Well, yeah, we'll have to get Or made of gold or something like that. The sesame seeds are gold. <laughs> um, Cameron, you spend an average of three hours on the toilet and one and a half hours exercising every week. Now, there you go. No, I... Uh, the, the toilet, I'd, I'd, I'd absolutely agree with, but I definitely spend more time <laughs> exercising. I did an hour and a half yesterday. Hour and a half, yeah. Then you're done for the week. Yeah, but... You're fine. Yeah, but then I did it on Monday as well. <laughs> but the toilet is absolutely correct. This is really cool, actually. Let's give you one more fact. Did you ever hear of the oligodynamic Oli- effect? Well, there, did you ever see a brass doorknob? Yeah. You don't really see them anymore. No, I used, to, used to have one in the, in the old house. Yeah. Never mad houses, about them. They're essentially hospitals. quite loud. Um, but they have uh, an effect in which they can disinfect themselves. Huh? Now, there you go. That's why they were used in lots of hospitals years ago. It's called the oligodynamic effect. Brass doorknobs will disinfect themselves. That's excellent. How cool is that? Why did they stop using them? Because they were too expensive. <laughs> but uh, you feel like the, bene- the benefits anymore. outweigh anything else. There you go. Bring them back. Bring stop back. Stop being the brass so cheap. Doorknobs. Hospitals. Absolutely. Bring Stick them back. Stick your hand in your pocket. Come on, <laughs> Cameron. Have a great Wednesday. Yeah, you too. Good luck. Judge you later. <laughs> Breakfast with Peter Dunn on Midlands 103. Weekday mornings from 6.30am. These are the highlights. Dermot Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Power over me, Midlands 103. It's Peter Dunn with you. Good morning to you. At quarter to eight. Well, did you get it right? There was a lot of answers. A lot of answers to our caffeine kick. Only some got it right. Will you be on the honours list? Bob the Builder builds an estate of 100 houses and he wants to number them from number 1 to 100. He has to buy each digit separately. So, for example, for 24, he must buy a 2 and a 4. For 36, he must buy a 3 and a 6, and so on and so forth. The question is, how many 9s does he need? Jim and Shannon Bridge got it right. Well done. Deck in Walsh Island. Ray Kelly in Eden Derry. Sylvia got it right. Siobhan in Port Leash got it right. After a lot of counting, she said... Martin got it Bernard in Port Arlington Oliver Cassidy in Clombalog Hilda got it um, Peter Coughlin Got it right Well done Peter uh, David and Haley Conlon in Mullingar Well done guys You got it right Martin Tullamore Catherine and Clara Ger Tate in Mullingar And Kelly and Clara All got it right The answer is He needs to buy 20 number 9s Now This came in from Mick Ryan in Castle Pollard Mick That was a brilliant suggestion And I love when you suggest Caffeine kicks. So if you have one, 083 30 10 103, text or WhatsApp them to me. And I did have to double and treble check this one. And I even a piece of paper in front of me where I've written down everything. You have to be right when it comes to caffeine kick. And I can confirm it is 20. So you go, you know, 9, then you have 19, 29, 39, 49, so forth. And then you have 90, then you have 91, and then 99. Add them all up, you get to 20. Well done. Well done if you got that right. And if you have one, 083 30 10 103. Mick, that was a brilliant one. Well done. Well, you're missing the music. You can get the show in full weekday mornings from 6 30 a.m. on Midlands 103. Teddy Swims, The Door, Midlands 103. That's the guy who's delighted that he didn't make it big until he got into his 30s. He reckons if he was any younger than that, he just wouldn't be able to handle it all. He's a fantastic voice, though, doesn't he? Do you know the way in some train stations, like in Houston and Dublin, uh, they'll have a piano there? And anybody can go up and play the piano if you want. If you can play it, obviously. But it was a guy casually playing the piano at King's Cross Station in London. And who showed up? Yeah, Teddy Swims. What a voice. Wow, I could listen to him all day, you know what? Imagine getting off the train and going, there's Teddy Swims. Free concert, isn't it? 
083 30 10 103 when you text or WhatsApp. I would love, 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 love to hear from you. Big hello to Eveen Craven from Scraggen in Tullamore. She's a big five today. That comes in from Leah and Dara. Ah, Eveen, have a brilliant, brilliant birthday. Five, half a decade old already. Wow. Have a brilliant day today, won't you? And I was asking, do you remember the reg number from your first car? Mm Mm-hmm. Mary in Tullamore said, uh, a 174 Fiat 127. And what I remember most is how many people I could fit into it. The year was 1974. Well, do you have one? Do you have a reg number do you remember? 083 30 10 103. Apparently 41% of us remember the reg number of our first car. Me? I, I can't really re- I remember it was a 1992 heap of... Get this show in full Monday to Friday from 6.30am to 9 on Midlands 103. Ariana Grande, we can't be friends. Midlands 103, we're all friends here. At 13 minutes past 8 on your Thursday morning. Good morning to you. Peter Dunn with you. Um, I'm asking, do you remember your first reg number? From your first car? Or maybe it was a family car. Ray said, ILI 41 with Dad's first family car in 1970. And Austin Martin, he overtook a Mercedes once. That's his claim to fame. I once overtook a Mercedes. Um, another one in here from Angela. OCI 756. It was in 1975 or 1976, I think. Wow. And... Uh, Big hello to Rosie who got in touch. We said, good morning. Yes, my dad's Black Ford Anglia DIR 76. He bought it brand new. Never forget that car. Well, do you remember your first reg number? I remember ours was 6868AI. And I think the AI was 84, was it? I am not sure. But if you know, let me know. 083 30 10 103. Love to hear from you. Lads, have you ever been told to grow up? But just grow up. Just mature, will you? Well, ladies, you'll be happy to hear that men finally grow up at the age of 43. Now, so a study into differences in maturity between the genders reveals that 8 out of 10 women are convinced men will mature well into their 30s and 40s. And the research found we believe signs of male maturity to begin to appear after the 40th birthday. 43 is the average age given. What are men's top 30 maturity failings as experienced by women? Getting too old for a stag do. Uh, Trying to do wheelies or stunts on your bicycle. (laughs) Sniggering at rude words. Uh, Playing video games. Eating after 2am in the morning. And finding their own farts and burps hilarious. The script for the first time, Midlands 103. And almost a year since the death of uh, Mark Sheehan. The script have announced two members to join the band. So uh, bass is Ben Sargent, who's been with them from the start. And he was in guitarist Ben Weaver. So the script are now a four-piece. Best of luck to the lads. And uh, the new music coming out shortly. Do you want to have a? Do you want to have a quick preview of it? Have a listen to this. It's called Both Ways. It's electric, like a current, and it's running through my veins. Interesting. Miss me, like I miss you, can I feel it no Okay, okay. I'm looking forward to hearing that in full. Nice one. Breakfast with Peter Dunn on Midlands 103 Weekday mornings from 6.30am These are the highlights Thanking you so much Cameron Great to hear Great to hear And do you know what We've got loads more Of uh, your first registration numbers That you remember This is riveting stuff here on The Breakfast Show Uh, Phil and Castle Pollard said uh, B829XYV my first new car in 1985. I still have the number plates off it. And Dee said, I always remember, remember my late sister's first rage. It was a Fiat SLI 815. Cameron, you're looking at me like I have 20 heads. Just a little bit confused. <laughs> These are registration numbers, you know, for cars. 
Are they? Yeah. From, you mean you mean they were? They were exactly from from one or two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Thomas and Portley said my first car was a wine coloured Ford Fiesta Reg number nine five seven TIE. A lot of people getting Fords early on. Yeah, Ash Fords are great cars. Ah, fair great enough. Cars. Fair enough. Yeah, uh, Cameron, I have a challenge for you, by the way. Okay. I love, it. I, I love a good challenge. Good, good, good. I love the way you get really competitive as well. Yeah. Because this is funny. I am a little bit psychotic about it. I'm going to give you a county and you have to give me the code for the reg number. Oh, okay. Oh, this is tough because some of them are really weird. Pop on them headphones because I, I have some tension music for you. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, I'm going to give you 30 seconds and please play along at home, okay? Oh, I'm, I'm going I'm I, to suck at this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you the county and you have to give me the code for the reg number. So okay. if I say awfully, you say... Oh, why? Oh, why? Brilliant. Yeah. Well done. So let's see, Cameron Clark, how many you can get in 30 seconds. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that is 10. Galway. G. Longford. L. No, LD. Okay. Limerick. Hurry up. L. L. Monaghan. M. Faster. Westmead. WM. Wicklow. W. Mead. M. Louth. L but Kerry K E Long Donegal Oh I don't know Carlo D. Oh no it's not D it's D D L for D- Donegal Okay we'll give you that Carlo C W Go on Kildare K E Okay we've gone way way over time one more uh Waterford W D <laughs> Actually, in fairness, you were right. You do suck at this game. Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> you let me see. Out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Out of 13. You, you asked got me 13. 13. Holy 1, moly. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You got 6 out of That's 13. That's nearly halfway. Nearly halfway. Not even halfway. That go away. <laughs> Look, we only, we only got you a half of these. We should have got you at least 26. How quick do you think you're able to talk? Well, you're able to talk quick. Oh, shush. <laughs> Outrageous. What, what was your first reg? That was probably like, you know, 2012 or something, wasn't it? My first reg. You remember it? A lot of people do. I don't. I remember every reg since then. I don't remember my first one. <laughs> Yeah, I, re- I remember everything wrong with my first car. I don't remember the radio. Yeah, yeah, I remember how much it cost me to get it fixed every two days. And how happy you were to get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. And fearing that your first car will come back to haunt you someday. When somebody knocks at your door going, here, I bought this off you and there's one or two things wrong with it. <laughs> one or two things. One or yeah. two things. Sorry, sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry. Sorry, there's music playing. Yeah, sorry, we'll probably have to go. I'll chat to you another time, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get this show in full Monday to Friday from 6.30am to 9 on Midlands 103. Michael Jackson on your feel-good station, Midlands 103. Big hello to Tom who texts in. Tom's on the bog as we speak. He's moving last year's turf. Mighty work, Tom. Mighty work. Have a great day, won't you? Peter, my dad's first car was a grey mini minor. Uh, PIZ8783. He had it delivered to the door and had a license, but never learned to drive. Wow. Um, 2 3 IR from James, who texts in to say it was a dodgy fee at 127. We bought it in Tullamore. The car cost £500 and the insurance was £1,000. <laughs> it's the first car Anne and I bought, and 40 years later. The feed has gone, but Anne is still here. Ah, nice one. <laughs> But the question is, would Anne still pass an NCT? 